Thank you very much uh, to Domus for having me invited to this event. I'm sorry to not be able to be there in person at the Teatro Parenti uh, to talk about the future of cities. I'm not a city expert, uh, but I do love cities. I was born and raised in New York City. I lived uh, 20 years in London and now I live in Milan. I think cities are where the action has been and the action will be. Uh, cities will undergo a lot of change and will face very serious challenges uh, in the future. Most of the population will continue to move in cities. I've read somewhere that two and a half billion people will live in cities by 2050. And this poses uh, great challenges and great opportunities. Are on the one hand, with an aging uh, population in urban developments, uh, there will be more and more competition for talent, for young talent, and globalization will only make this competition uh, more intense. Then there's a big question about sustainability and how we can uh, afford from an energy and from a resource perspective to uh, have all these people move from the urban world into, into the cities. And then we have uh, a mobility issue. We have already a lot of traffic in cities. We need to reconfigure the urban developments to make them more integrated, more sustainable uh, from an environmental point of view and from a mobility point of view. So what should cities do uh, to address some of these challenges? Well, let's start with the first one. On the question of attractiveness, there are many studies, many benchmarks. Every week on some magazine you read about a new survey on the most livable city, the most attractive city, the most dynamic city. I think the actual attractiveness, what makes a city special, is its energy, not in so much the uh, conventional sense of energy, but its vibe. Uh, and its vibe is very hard to capture uh, in a statistic. The vibe is a combination of a city that works, a city that's attractive to younger people, uh, to university students, a city that has uh, cultural richness. I was living in London in the uh, middle of the 90s when London wasn't attractive uh, as much as it is today. And I really saw London move quite rapidly at the end of the 90s uh, from being uh, kind of a businessy, not so culturally attractive to really being uh, one of the world's most dynamic cities. But let's look at the other issues and the other challenges and, and how to deal with them. I think uh, the conventional energy uh, will be uh, an issue because people living in cities will consume uh, more of the city's uh, footprint to produce the energy they need and they will also produce uh, more waste and they will also require more transport. So if nothing is done, that will lead to greater emissions, greater pollution. So I really uh, think it, the future has to be circular. Urban development and architecture and designers all have to work together to come up with solutions that are much more energy uh, aware. 40% uh, of pollution comes from buildings. We need to make buildings in cities a lot more efficient from an energy point of view. The second point is that mobility has to quickly move away from polluting fuels to cleaner fuels and to electricity and to hydrogen. Uh, we have in SNAM invested a lot on natural gas for mobility. Natural gas buses, for example, produce zero particulate. Just to give an idea, in the city of Beijing, moving away from coal uh, into natural gas uh, for, for heating and cooking uh, extended the life of people in Beijing uh, by two and a half years. Energy is very important and also the opportunity to use waste, urban waste, to fuel uh, the heating and the mobility. We're doing this in SNAM with biomethane. The third uh, big area uh, for opportunity is to have cities that are more open, cities that have places where citizens can meet, can interact, where public-private partnerships are effective at engaging the local communities, not only to address their challenges, but to offer them uh, more and more opportunities for cultural events and for meeting points. This is what we're doing in SNAM with the Fondazione SNAM. We're working with the Fondazione Cariplo, for example, to address educational poverty and infrastructure. 
On a personal level, I've started with my family a foundation here in Milan called Fondazione Quinta. Uh, we offer to uh, people living around us in the Quartiere Isola of Milan open access uh, to participate in our cultural events, including uh, meeting places and conferences where we talk about technology. Something that can really help cities is to capitalize on specific events. For Milan, the expo was a turning point and I hope that the Olympics that will come to Milan and to Cortina d'Ampezzo in 2026 will also be another additional trigger to continue to invest in the infrastructure and to continue to progress on this positive path. So in a nutshell, I think the solutions are there, the technology is there, the changes will happen, they will be changes for the good, and I think so long as we keep an open and circular dialogue, we have great opportunities for cities. Thank you very much.